When I bought this 55 Pontiac a couple years ago, I could see it was power steering, that was obvious. I could see it was an automatic transmission, that was obvious. Even though there's no park, which is weird. You use reverse for park. But I didn't know about the brakes. I mean, obviously they're four wheel drum brakes, but I figured they were four wheel drum non power brakes. But since you don't have the master cylinder here, instead you've got a heater box. And uh, you don't have the brake booster either here, obviously. So uh, I just assumed it was uh, a non-power brake car, which is fine with me. I'm good with non-power brakes. I don't need power brakes. So I buy the car. I'm driving the car. It runs when I bought it. And I'm driving around. It stops fine. Everything's good. And there's no leaks. And uh, I'm checking the oil. I'm checking the transmission fluid. I'm checking the power steering fluid. And I figure, well, i got to check the brake fluid, even though the brakes were working good. So, uh, I figure that it's down here, like a lot of these 50s cars, and like my 61 Studebaker. So on the 61 Studebaker Hawk, here's where you add the brake fluid, because that's the uh, master cylinder right there. I figure it's on the floorboard, down by the brake pedal, there's going to be an access panel. So I pulled the carpet up which was easy enough to do, expecting that uh, the carpet was easy to pull up because there's an access panel. There's no access panel. So, I jack up the car and I get underneath and I figure out, okay, well there's the brake line and it's going to, oh, look where it's going to. It's jammed underneath the steering box for the power steering. And where I've got my funnel right there, that's where you add the uh, brake fluid. And uh, if you've got one of the big brake fluid containers, you can't even get it in there with the air cleaner installed. So you can get one of the smaller containers of brake fluid and add brake fluid. Or you can like double stack funnels or you can get a longer funnel with a flexible you know end on it to snake it down in there because it's just it's wedged right underneath that uh, that steering box, the steering column integrated with the power steering. You can see the power steering line hooked up right there. One of them, another one down there. Anyway, then when you add the fluid, you pull the, the plug out, you put the funnel in, you add the fluid. You can't even tell when the thing is filled because it's so far down there and it's jammed right up underneath it. You can't swedge it in, you can't see it. So you just add fluid until it overflows and dumps out on the ground, and that's when you're full. So that wasn't ideal, but I'm doing it. That's how I'm adding the fluid. And uh, oh, by the way, I checked my owner's manual. If you find this online PDF, nowhere in that owner's manual does it tell you how to check your brake fluid on this car. It tells you how to check all your other fluids, and it tells you if your brakes don't feel right, take it immediately to your Pontiac service center. So the owner's manual didn't even tell you how to check the brake fluid, because the engineers knew that it's a real hassle. And so they wanted you to take it to a mechanic and have them uh, add brake fluid for you. So I knew I wanted a remote um, brake fluid reservoir mounted up on the firewall, and that would be, uh, or up on the fender, and that would be a lot easier for me. Uh, but I didn't mess with it. You know, I drove this car for a couple of years and then a seal blew in the brake booster and uh, I had the booster and the master cylinder uh, rebuilt as an assembly by an outfit that does that. And I sent it to Florida and had them rebuild it. it. Looks like they did a really nice job. I haven't uh, tested it yet. I just installed it. But I figure while I'm installing it, I'm going to go ahead and rig up a uh, remote reservoir. So I found this guy on eBay and I just did a search for um, remote brake fluid reservoir. I think any car, I don't care. And I like this one because it's metal and it looks vintage and it looks like it belongs in a 55. Um, I think the ad said it came out of a 63 Sunbeam Alpine on eBay. But like I said, any, anything would work fine. Um, it's just a container that's vented. 
this right there, there's a little pinhole at the top and a little pinhole right there. So that's your vent for air, which every master cylinder has. You've got a cap on your master cylinder, you've got to have it vented. So it's vented, it's for this purpose. On the top it says uh, use girdling brake fluid. So all I need to do then is attach the end down here to the plug. So I ordered this new plug for the uh, master cylinder in the 55 Pontiac. It says it's for a Chevy, but it's the inch and a quarter measured on the threads and uh, 18 threads per inch apparently. It's supposed to be for a Chevy, but it fit the Pontiac no problem. And I drilled a hole, which I tapped for an eighth inch pipe thread. And I ordered an elbow fitting, because like I can say it's cramped between here and the steering box slash steering column, there's like very little room. So you didn't have room for a straight bar if you needed a 90 degree elbow. So this elbow has an eighth inch national pipe thread, NPT, on one end. And then it's just a 5 16th barb on the other for this special hose that I got, which is for uh, brake fluid that isn't under pressure. Alright, so now I've got everything I need. I drilled the hole offset because the vent hole was drilled right here. The vent hole was right in the side and it went right into this cavity area in here and then there was this little baffle pressed in there and the baffle was pressed in obviously to allow airflow through the vent hole but not allow uh, splashing uh, brake fluid in there like when you go around a curve or something like that so that the brake fluid doesn't splash out at that vent hole because it's just a straight hole that went straight through there and into this cavity. So I figured if I drilled it offset and drilled it on the side that the hole was on that the threads from the pipe fitting, the pipe threads there, I figured would, uh, would block the hole off. But I reconsidered that idea and uh, I really could have just drilled this dead center because what I did anyway was I welded the hole closed. It means just a little pinhole. Yeah, it's still leaking. Not very much, just maybe a drop every five or ten seconds. So it's hard to tell where it's leaking from because this thing's buried in there so good. But I think it's leaking from the threads right there because I had a clamp on the hose and that wasn't leaking. And I don't think it was leaking from that rubber o-ring seal. Because it was a little bit wet on top. Not a lot, but a little bit. So anyway, here's why I think that it's leaking from the threads. What I did was I just drilled this thing and tapped it for an eighth inch pipe thread. And when I did that, I drilled it offset. And by drilling it offset, you know, I've got a lot of meat on this side. But on this side, there's like one, two, there, if I point it like that. Now you can see the threads, sort of, but I can't. Uh, there we go. One, two, three, four, five. Five and a half threads on that side, and a lot of threads on the other side. So, if I drilled it right in the center, then it would have been five threads all the way around. So, what I bought was this it's a weldable eighth inch pipe thread bung. So,
like that. And obviously this has threads going all the way down. Way more threads than I need. So this will definitely provide a good seal. And unfortunately, since I had the clever idea of drilling this thing offset, I can't just get a drill that size and drill it out because I'm not centered to begin with. So now I've got to take my die grinder and a carbide tip. That took about 30 minutes with the die grinder. Now I've got a centered hole instead of an offset hole. And uh, that's why I ordered a new plug and butchered the new plug rather than the factory plug. The factory plugs in the car. I can drive the car. You know, it's just fine. I've got the hose. I've got a 5 16 bolt in the hose, and that's clamped on there. So my reservoir cap is on, and the hose is plugged off, so dirt and stuff can't get in. And my uh, my reservoir is basically just sitting there on the uh, inner fender while um, waiting for this guy. So for those keeping score at home, it might have been easier if I just ordered another one of these plugs and drilled it center because this one was drilled offset and I could have just drilled it bigger and bigger and bigger until it was big enough for this guy to fit in like that see there but the plug's like I don't know nine ten bucks and I didn't want to wait a few days for shipping so anyway wasn't too bad with the die grinder. I got that centered. It also would have been easier to buy a new plug and also buy a new elbow barb. Um, one that's steel and not brass. One without threads at all. And then you just drill a 5 16 hole and you stick your barb in the 5 16 hole and you weld your steel barb to the steel plug and you're done. And then you don't have to worry about any pipe threads at all. But I didn't do that. I did this. And here I am, and it's getting messy. But the next thing I'm going to do is grind down what's left of these flats. Okay, so that's welded in. On both sides, for good measure. I bought an inch and one eighth uh, combination wrench and I really just want the box end off of it as it's a long wrench. Obviously I'm going to have to cut this wrench about right there because that's all the clearance I've got to get to this thing once it's installed. I bought a jam nut and uh, when I bought the jam nut I just looked and saw what size wrench I would need for it. So uh, I don't need the threads inside the jam nut so I just ground away inside there. With that ground out on the bottom and put that on there like that. Now I can weld the jam nut to the top of my master cylinder plug. Now that the jam nut's welded on there I can uh, get a wrench on it. So I should have that much clearance right there the thickness of the uh, box in it. But once I install it in the car I'll find out for sure. But uh, I say normally just you know I think finger tight and then maybe just a little bit. But uh, when it comes to breaking the torque I found out that uh, just a little bit turns into really tight and then it takes quite a bit to break the torque. But now I'm not using a three quarter inch uh, open end. I've got the full box that I can get on there. So with a box end it would be a lot easier. All right, all done. And one thing I should mention is that uh, when I painted it, I put this in there to protect the um, threads. And the whole time I was welding, I was doing the same thing. You don't want any weld splatter on those threads. And you don't want anything destroying those threads either. And then uh, one more thing. You see, I got like a little swimming pool area. Oh, there it is. A little area right here, the recessed area, and uh, so if this thing does leak, 
from the eighth inch pipe threads. And I'm going to know it for sure this time. Now if it leaks just like it leaked before, about a drop every five seconds, and it's dry in this recessed area right in here, then that means that the leak is somewhere below the level of the uh, eighth inch pipe thread. So then you're looking at maybe this o-ring right here. Maybe that's not doing its job. Or maybe it's got nothing to do with the plug at all. Maybe it's the, uh, the flat plate that bolts onto the master cylinder and the gasket that's underneath that. And if that's the leaking point, then the next step is remove the, uh, the master cylinder and brake booster as an assembly and uh, then remove that plate and then find a better rubber gasket, maybe, or something. Seems like a lot of work. And you got to bleed the brakes again. So hopefully this works. I painted, painted it shiny orange. I thought I was grabbing black engine paint. Turns out it was Chevy orange. That's all right. It'll be interesting once I install it to see if you can even notice it is tucked down as far away as it is even when it is bright orange. Well, it's been fun. I cut this box end down to six inches overall length. And it works great. I mean, just really fantastic. No worries at all. Of course, I haven't tried it with the elbow installed yet. Um, I just installed it, snugged it down. Um, again, I don't have to smoke it. I mean, I could smoke it with inch and an eighth, but you don't need to smoke this thing because it's got an O-ring right there. So just snug enough to have pressure on the O-ring, and that's going to give our sealing and the clamping strength there to seal. Anyway, I marked where, with black marker there, so that's where that needs to be clocked. I'm going to install it without Teflon tape, and if it leaks, I'll try Teflon tape, and if it still leaks, there's some um, Permatex that you can get. All right, let's do it. All right, first of all, that box end worked great, which is good because as a last resort, I would have to use the open end side of that combination wrench. And uh, I really prefer a box end to the, uh, to the open end side because you get you know, a much better bite, obviously. So the box end worked great. You didn't have to use the open end. Uh, snugged the uh, plug down and uh, it put the elbow right where I wanted it. I got the hose hooked up. You can see right there at the center of the screen that bright orange dot 
that's the plug and it's got the uh, 90 degree elbow and it's got the hose with a hose clamp and that hose is uh, specifically for brake fluid so brake fluid won't deteriorate this hose the way it will deteriorate uh, a vacuum hose or a, a fuel hose and uh, it's, uh, it's all set. So now we put fluid in it and we see what happens. All right, so the master cylinder itself is uh, filled to the top. And now as the fluid makes its way down the 5 sixteenths hose, you see the air bubbles coming up. And that's the air leaving the hose being replaced by fluid. So eventually those bubbles will stop and everything will settle down and either I'll have a leak or I won't have a leak. Alright, so it's done with the air bubbles. It's still about half full and all the air is out of the system. So now I've raised the fluid level from the master cylinder up to basically the top of the inner fender and uh, bad news it is leaking. Oh yeah, so it's leaking worse than it was before. And this was probably leaked the whole time. I probably didn't have to install that uh, eighth inch NPT threaded bung that I welded into the plug. All that I think was just uh, part of the learning curve. I can see the leak. I don't know if you can see it. Let's see. It's right past where the brake line screws into the master cylinder. It's like right over there in the corner. Oh yeah, that's better. There it is. So it's leaking right there and it's hitting the frame rail and then it's running down the frame rail and dripping off the frame rail. I know where it's leaking from this time. Um, it's the uh, O-ring and uh, that's like soaking wet with brake fluid. But uh, now that it's painted orange, the plug is orange, I was able to get this flashlight snake down in there and uh, I know you can't see anything on the video, but you remember there's a recessed area just the way that orange plug ended up being engineered. There's a recessed area like a little swimming pool between the uh, jam nut and the threaded welded in bung. And if the hose was leaking or the 90 degree barb that screwed into that uh, welded in bung, if that was leaking, then that little swimming pool would fill up with brake fluid and then overflow and then go down the uh, top of the uh, master cylinder plate, cover plate there. Um, but I don't have any fluid at all around the hose clamp and I don't have any fluid at all around the top of the orange plug. It's the base of the orange plug. That's where it was wet. And uh, I just put the, the rag down there, the paper towel to verify that that's where it's wet. So it's not leaking that I can tell. It's not leaking 
from the plate gasket, which is a brand new gasket because this thing was just rebuilt, um, and it's not leaking from the pipe thread and it's not leaking from the hose clamp, it's leaking from that O-ring. So now I need to find a new uh, O-ring seal for that or, um, or use a flat uh, paper gasket. one or the other, but I need to seal it between the plug and the master cylinder. I need to get that to seal. And uh, once I get that, then uh, this project will be a success. But right now it's leaking. So for right now, basically, that guy is just a remote funnel, not a remote reservoir. Okay, so I want to tighten that down a little bit more. It's snug right now with the wrench. And in my opinion, it's, it should be tight enough. But you can actually see, I think, with, with it zoomed in like that, you can actually see it's wet around uh, the base of the plug. And uh, I don't know if you can tell in the video, but it's absolutely dry in the center in that uh, little recessed area. So I don't want to pull the hose off because it's kind of a hassle getting to... Uh, that hose clamp even with a quarter inch nut driver. I should be able to just get right on there and snug it down a little bit more um, and I won't have to take the hose off to do that so this should be really easy. There we go. I'm on it right there. And I moved it a little bit. Not much. No. That's good. Yeah, it's still leaking. And my leak was in fact on this side. And it was leaking down. And that's exactly where I'm seeing a chemical type bubbling of the paint that I don't see anywhere else on it. See how that paint's smooth even though the that paint's smooth what's left of it? The box end took a lot of paint off which is to be expected but all of that paint still looks smooth until you get to right where the leak was. So now I'm starting to second guess everything. I'm starting to think that maybe it's not the O-ring after all. It's really hard to find, figure out what's leaking when you can't even see the, the thing that's stuck in there so far. So now I'm going to go back to my original plan. Next up, Teflon tape. I don't know how you can see that, but that's where the plug plugs into on the top cover of the master cylinder. There's no flat surface. There's no flat surface for a gasket, a paper style gasket. You see it's, it's a raised raised all the way around right there. So the O-ring is the only seal that would make sense. That paper gasket doesn't make any sense at all. It's got to be an O-ring. An O-ring that gets tucked right in there just above the threads. I don't know how well you can make out the design of that. You see the whole thing is raised. I'd rather that it was flat if it had a nice, you know, flat mounting surface. But uh, again, now I'm not so sure that it's the O-ring at all. So let's put some Teflon tape on it, put it back in there, and see what happens. Now I've got Teflon tape <coughs> on the pipe threads, and I got the O-ring back on there. So that O-ring's in really good shape. So. If you think about the design of where this screws into, that O-ring should basically just act like a, like a stopper that you would put in your sink or your bathtub, you know, like a rubber stopper. It should just plug it up that way. It should be pretty effective. And we'll see what the Teflon tape does. The clamp is snug on the hose. The hose is snug on the barb. The pipe thread is smoked into its eighth inch 
high thread bung is welded in there and the plug is just uh, snug into its hole. So you know, finger tighten and just a little bit with the wrench. That's all I gave it. So now we put more brake fluid into the reservoir and hopefully it doesn't just dump out on the ground. Yeah, it's still leaking. After all that. I do have another idea why it's leaking so much and it's not the Teflon tape. There's no way. I mean I know there's a lot of talk on the internet about don't use Teflon tape in brake systems with, uh, with brake fluid because it will deteriorate it. But it won't deteriorate it that fast. As soon as I installed this guy it leaked just the same as it ever did even with the Teflon tape installed in there. So I'm not blaming the Teflon tape and I'm not going to jump to that uh, Permatex yet because that's for hydraulic fluid under pressure. And I know I don't need that. There's something simpler going on here. So from the factory they weren't worried about making that plug uh, completely leak proof. If you turn the, the whole mass cylinder upside down it's going to leak. Uh, I'm not sure if they put a gasket on it or not. When I ordered a replacement plug I got that paper gasket and when I ordered um, or when I got the uh, master cylinder and booster rebuilt they gave me this o-ring but I'm not sure how good that o-ring is because where the plug seats into on the top cover of the master cylinder it basically looks like that it's not that you know tall from there to there uh, because obviously the plug threads are going to go down into the master cylinder but <clears throat> that's what it is it's like you know 14 gauge steel probably and they just stamped out the plate to kind of you know bring it up and machine the top and threaded it and, uh, and that's all there is to it if you, if you look at my video when I zoomed into the thing that's where the plug plugs into on the top cover of the master cylinder there's no flat surface there's no flat surface for a gasket a paper style gasket. You see it's it's a raised raised all the way around right there. So how do you seal against something like that? You know? Will a paper gasket do it? Not very well because you don't have a flat <clears throat> mating surface at all. Um, will an o-ring do it? Here's what I'm thinking. This o-ring what if this o-ring is so fat that when I thread it onto there instead of jamming in there and you know creating a seal what if the o-ring is just being pushed to the outside so here's how I can check my theory I've got this o-ring and every time I install it this thing clocks to the same position right it points towards the uh, driver side rear tire basically if you were to look at it like that. Um, if I take this o-ring off that should change everything right? Now when I install it without the o-ring it shouldn't clock to the same position unless I was always getting metal to metal contact. I just installed the plug with no o-ring at all and uh, put it in there finger tight and then snugged it just a little bit like with the wrench just like I've been doing this whole time and sure enough uh, the barb was clocked in exactly the same position so I've been metal to metal this whole time and that's been my leak this whole time so basically this o-ring wasn't doing its job because it's supposed to sit between the top cover of the master cylinder and get sandwiched between the top cover and the metal plug and it wasn't getting sandwiched it was getting pulled to it was getting pushed to the outside of that ring because it's only like 14 gauge steel and there's no flat surface at all there there's no mating surface because they didn't care um, it was fine for doing its job but not fine for a guy who might want a uh, remote reservoir down the road 
So we're ditching this fat O-ring and I put a skinny little green O-ring on there which is much thinner and the idea is that it needs to get jammed a little bit inside this area because this one's getting pushed to the outside and then every time I unscrewed it the threads were picking it up and pulling it back out again so it wasn't like all the way you know around the outside just a little bit around the outside so that when I pulled the plug out the threads would pull it out and everything would look normal that must be what's happening anyway so I'll try it with this thin one and uh, we'll see what that does it'll probably instead of it being clocked in that position it might be clocked over there now okay skinny o-ring finger tight still leaks added some brake fluid still leaks gave it just a little bit of a snugging with the open end still leaks tighten it pretty good with the open end still leaks doesn't seem to make a difference so now the question is this is the factory plug the uh, modified plug is still installed how do you seal something like that against something like that and it's not with a fat o-ring and it's not with a skinny o-ring so that leaves a gasket but not this gasket because I've already tried this gasket and it didn't work I figure there's there's a lot of play right there seems like it's a little bit loose So maybe I make my own gasket. I don't think cork is ideal. I don't know about that. That might be about right. And I just make it so that it, uh, it fits real snug on there. In fact, I make it so that it's so snug that I have to screw it onto the threads. It won't just slide down the way that one does. You're going to have to screw it on. It's going to be so tight. And then you don't want to over torque it because if you over torque it you're going to do the same thing. You're going to take this paper gasket and you're going to just shove it to the outside of, of its seating area. Okay, so I pulled it out and once again the o-ring looks just fantastic but it didn't do a very good job so the o-ring is going to be replaced with this guy which I cut smaller than that guy That's the first time I've ever had to screw on a gasket. But that's snug. So, what I did was I just, uh, using the curved fingernail scissors, I cut out the center until uh, it was just, you know, almost big enough to go on there. And still much smaller than that one and uh, had to screw it on it's tight so now we try this one finger tight and we leak check it and if it leaks then I'll you know snug it a little bit with the wrench okay so now the plug's got the blue gasket on it and it's got no o-ring and I don't know if you can tell from this angle but it actually did change the uh, clock position of the 90 degree bar. It's no longer pointing towards the uh, driver's side rear tire. It's uh, pointing basically straight rear. I actually uh, put it in finger tight and I actually had to snug it a little bit with the wrench, just a little bit, just to get the uh, the hose in a position where I could get the, uh, the nut driver on the hose clamp. 
So that gasket definitely made a difference. And uh, I topped off the reservoir with brake fluid. We'll see if it leaks. Here we go again. That paper gasket went on really tight. I needed two hands to put it on. I tried putting on just holding the plug with one hand and uh, and just you know threading on, screwing the gasket on with my right hand. Couldn't do it. I had to put the thing in the vise just to get the gasket installed. So it was precision cut for a really tight fit because the top cover plate doesn't have a nice flat mating surface. But uh, to answer my own question. How do you get a tight seal between uh, two surfaces like that? That's the answer. It's not no ring. It's a paper gasket. It's cut to fit really tight because uh, I filled the reservoir and it's done bubbling out the air from the hose being displaced by the fluid. So the whole thing is is hooked up and it's not leaking. Check this out. I'm really happy about that. Ouch. Alright. Let's see where it was leaking. Because the frame rail still has drips hanging off of it. And at first there was some residual dripping, you know, but it was like one drop every 20 seconds. And then it slowed down and slower and slower and slower and finally no drops. Just was hanging there. So I think that's sleep check good. I just got to keep an eye on the uh, level of brake fluid in the reservoir like you'd normally do and uh, that is required so that's awesome I really wanted a remote reservoir in this car and now I've got one and it's also good because I'm giving this car to my daughter and uh, I don't want to give her a car where the engineers designed it so that you gotta take it to a mechanic every time you want your brake fluid level checked. Everyone should be able to check their own brake fluid. So she can check her oil, her transmission fluid, the coolant in the radiator, her power steering fluid, and she can check her brake fluid. And in fact, the easiest thing to check on this car now is brake fluid. Thanks to that uh, inner fender mounted remote brake fluid reservoir. Sweet. I'm happy.